Ang sikip po, ma'am. That's because you are the ko. <laughs> I'm very cozy here. Napansin ko, every time we do a podcast, you're wearing makeup. Is that a thing or coincidence or? Because we usually do it at night after my shoots. Does so. that help with your voice na? Maging sexy. Mm, yeah. Makeup for the voice. May yeah. ba? Mm. <laughs> no love. It's just, that's just me actually. No makeup to. <laughs> I woke up like this. <laughs> Welcome to the Sky Podcast. Have you always been Kikai when you were younger? Yes. Oh, you know why? It's so funny. Actually, when I was really young, uh, mm-hmm. maybe like two, three years old, I looked like a boy. Like, I really looked like my dad. So, ngayon hindi na. Hindi na. Really? Hindi na. I hate you. You're so mean. <laughs> but I really looked like a boy. And I remember we were in Canada, if I'm not mistaken, when I was three. And the waitress told my mom, okay, um, is that like, what does the little boy want? For lunch mm. and i remember hearing that and i was three years old and i really up to this day remember feeling oh my god did you just call me a boy <laughs> yeah and so i feel like subconsciously that's why i always gravitated towards all things girly you overcompensated yeah because i'm like huh, i'm not a boy do they think about okay ribbons from now on pearls pink like everything girly who taught you to be like girly girly? Like nobody your taught mom? me per se. nobody taught me per se. Um, my mom, she knows about beauty and she's always been a kikai girl herself. But mm. she never told me like Chris, you have to wear this. You have to actually come to think of it, <laughs> she did. Psychology, to parang alam mo yung yung ibini <laughs> bring up yung session. <laughs> therapist oh my session. Goodness. Yeah, it's true. I remember that when she used to pick me up from my dance practices when I was still in school. Mm-hmm. And I'd always be really sweaty, right? Coming from dance, um, rehearsals, everything. She'd always tell me to like fix my hair or like wear something nice, you know, change. Always, w- There was always something with grooming. Like I always had to be well-groomed. And I remember mm. um, even when I was so into dancing ballet when I was in high school, she told me to stop dancing ballet because ballerinas get those really big, chunky, muscly mm. legs, right? And she didn't want my legs to be chunky. I know. And it was <laughs> so you stop. Of course I didn't stop, but it's just like it shows how that part is very important to her. Like how your body looks like, your grooming, all of these things. If we had a girl, would you give her the same advice or upbringing? Um, ang, ang, ang. Siguro I will tancha first if diba, oh, what she's into. Wag kang tumakbo kasi magasgas yung legs mo. Oh, that's all my mom. Uh, Growing up, she always you, tell Would me, that be you? I don't know because um, when I was younger, I didn't resent her for it. Mm. I just kind of it's like a fact of life. Like, don't run because you'll get wounds on your legs. You'll get gasgas, ganyan. And now, like... So that, wala, that's why now nice. you don't know how to run. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> but I don't... I really don't resent her for it. In fact, I thank her for it. Like, she introduced me to skincare when I was just in high school. Mm. I was using eye cream, moisturizer, mm. high school pa lang every night. Are you the only one like that in your fam- family? I know you have, like, two two other sisters, so... Uh, no, we all started skincare very, very young. <laughs> but I would say na sa lahat ng mga siblings namin, ako yung pinakamaarte. My sister, my eldest sister, Diane, um, she's also very fashionable. She oh. was also very fashionable when she was a single woman. But now that she's a mom and she has five kids, yes, five kids, mom na yung fashion niya, <laughs> sorry, yet. <laughs> but it's interesting to see how you grew grew up. I mean, you grew up na meron na kayong department store, di ba? Sobrang sikat dito sa Cebu. K- kami kasi, when we were growing up, parang apartment, ganyan. So, from that perspective, parang, how was it like to have like, all the access to all the things you can have? Uh, I didn't have... Did that have, affect you? I didn't have that access. I think my parents were very... Um, they didn't want to spoil us. Mm. So, I remember when I was in elementary, I'd only always have two pairs of shoes. Like, for lang. example, elementary ka and my assignment ka. All the bun papers, all the color papers. Oh, yeah, papers. yeah. When it comes to 
school stuff. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Like they they I we I we were <laughs> sorry. Um we were very well provided for talaga. Mm. And my parents made sure that whatever we needed we had. But when it came to things that weren't of importance, like I want three extra sandals to, to wear on rotation. No, Wala. I can only get new shoes once the ones I'm wearing are beaten up. So when I'm so sick of my two pairs of shoes, I will beat the crap out of them para <laughs> they'll buy me new ones. Hala, mommy, yeah. if you're listening. But I really remember, and I think um, that was good on them because it's true. Like, we, we used to have a department store here and I could technically, like, take my pick, right? All the mm. clothes, all the shoes, everything. But I didn't and they didn't allow me. But and I also like to do that for Scott or if we had a girl baby. Yeah. Para hindi maging spoiled, right? And na appreciate niya yung mga little things. Right. Like. You ha you place value on these things. Like it's not something na you can just get at any moment. Mm. It's special. So how did you become fashion if you had just one pair of shoes? Finally, like got to save my own money for my allowance and I was in college. Mm. Dun na kasi when you're in college, you don't have uniform. Well, kami, I studied in Ateneo, wala na kami uniform. Mm. So I was like, ah, oh, fashion show time. So it became of a thing. So sa- Ano na, college na. No, I was very, like, I always admired my eldest sister, who I mentioned earlier, mm. always had great fashion sense. And I'd always raid her closet when she went out on dates, when she was out of the house. I'd always look at her closet and try it on. And whenever, like, I'd see her dress up, like, super fashionable, I loved how she put pieces together. And I'd always imagine, like, one day when I'm big enough, when I have boobs, I'm going to wear this. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember thinking that. Like, when I have boobs, I can pull off this. Ngayon, my group, my boobs ka na ngayon. <laughs> Breastfeeding boobs. <laughs> but seriously, like, the way my relationship with clothes, like, it was never, like, even with my body, it was never, like, I want to have big boobs because... It's sexy. It was always, I want this size of boobs lang. Kasi perfecto for <laughs> the clothes. It's always been the clothes. It's always been fashion. Mm. And a lot of that has to do with, number one, my grandmother, who was always put together. She mm. was always prim and proper. And like, like she always looked like, because of what she was wearing, her aura was always powerful. Um, people would always look at her when she entered the room. And I really wanted that. Like, I wanted to command respect. Mm. Um, because of my self-esteem issues, where Is we can get get on like of the height issue. <sighs> Why are you adding to my issues? Because it's more pag hindi ka tall, may mga self-esteem issues. Bully ka talaga. <laughs> Is it ka like talaga. honestly? Of course not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took pride in my height. I really did until you came along. Just kidding. <laughs> I still take pride in my height, honestly. Okay, good. But um, I always look. Looked up to my grandmother. I looked up to my mom, who's also very kikai mm-hmm. and also very fashionable. And I also looked up to my ate, who again was like the queen stylist in my eyes. It's so opposite because sa amin never yun naging topic. Like secondhand kami from I think till college. Secondhand everything, hand me down from my cousins. So no nobody ever taught us like even prom parang hiram ka lang ng Nang suit, yeah, suit yeah, yeah, from other people, it doesn't really fit you well. So, were you taught like, oh, this goes with this? No, no, it's really just from observation. And I think my sister learned from magazines and like, you know, pop culture. Mm. And I would always like, I, you know, how you always idolize your siblings. I don't know if you can relate because you're the eldest. Okay. But I was the youngest, and okay, I am I the youngest. Nila. <laughs> <laughs> so I always looked up to my siblings, talaga, like. They knew everything and I like just looked at them and like said to myself, one day I will be this. One day whatever she has right now, whatever, like she has a boyfriend, one day boyfriend. She has this outfit, one day this outfit is mine. Ganon. So yung one day mo when you were younger was in career wise, what was it? What do you mean? Like, what did you want to be when you were young? Career-wise, different. Because I was always into the performing arts. So I was a dancer and no one in my family performed. Mm. Like, everybody was just business, fashion, like, business, basically business. And I was the only one who um, was very outgoing. Uh, I wanted to dance. I wanted to sing, even though I couldn't sing very well. And so I took up ballet and um, I always wanted to be a teacher, a ballet teacher. But you also dance hip-hop, R&B, mga ganyan, di ba? Yes, but ballet was really a different kind of love. Yeah. <laughs> so and from I, being... I taught ballet when I was in high school. Mm. Yeah. 
And so that I really thought that that was the career path that I wanted. In fact, I wanted my college course to be dance. Mm, Bale, yun yung gusto mo. Bale. <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> uh, Bale tayo sa topic natin. <laughs> Guys, I have to live with this guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when did it change? <laughs> um, well, my dad told me, no, you can't study dance in college. Get a business course or get a course, whatever course you want. And then after, if you still want to pursue dance, go ahead. At least you have fallback. Na mm. Something that you can lean on, the course. So I'm like, fine, what am I going to study? I didn't know anything. I didn't know what I wanted. So I took up a business course in college. Um, first, I took up management information systems. It was like an IT course merged with business that I had no idea what it was about. And my brother just told me, I'll take it. This is a good course. So I took it. And then when I went to school, oh my God, it's all boys? Where are all my Kikai girls? <laughs> So my first year of college, like all my classmates were boys. There were only like two, three girls with me. And I did not enjoy that. So I shifted out. I needed like peers, you know. Mm. I was so social, but I couldn't relate to anyone. Wala kang ma-a-appear. Appear. Appear, <laughs> down here. You're so annoying. <laughs> I couldn't relate to anyone in class because mm. everyone was like into tech, into games, into I don't know what, what boys are into. Mm. So I shifted into another course that was kind of similar, but more focused on communications and business. So I shifted to communications technology management. And it was a course that was predominantly female. Mm, Doon mo nahanap si peer. <laughs> Doon ko nahanap mga peers ko. <laughs> and I love the course. And I feel like sobrang bagay siya. Mm. So what I'm doing now, ah. like communications, and then it's tech and it's business. What does it teach you? Does it teach you how to write? Because you're fairly eloquent. Is that something that you got from From school? school? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's because we were brought up speaking English. It, mm. it was our first language mm. more than Bisaya. So when I think, I think in English first. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. I think in English first and then I translate everything to Tagalog or Bisaya. Wow. So shall. It's not so shall. It's just how it is. I don't, that's something I don't understand actually. Like, why do people say, like, you're hilas if you speak English? Why do people say you're not nationalistic if you speak English? It's just the way, like... It's the way you were raised. But ano kasi, parang majority of the people speak Tagalog or Bisaya. Yeah, and I can speak fluent Bisaya and I can speak Tagalog. So yeah. it doesn't mean like I'm less of a person because I learned English first. You know what I mean? Okay. It's go. funny lang. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's just funny. I hear it all the time. Like, why is English nosebleed, nosebleed? I'm like, what? <laughs> when people speak Tagalog, I don't say nosebleed. I just listen and try my best. you're from the Philippines. People want you to speak the Filipino language. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, we shouldn't judge each other. If you want to speak Tagalog, speak. If you want to speak English, go. Mm. Ganun dapat. Ako, I never learned to speak Tagalog until PBB. Oh. Yeah. Alam naman natin, mga taga Cebu, parang yeah. we're shy to speak it's hard. Tagalog. It's really hard oh, to learn Tagalog. Mas madali yung English sa atin. And I'm the same way. I only learned how to speak Tagalog after college when I ha when I started hanging out with my blogger besties. Mm. When I was in college, actually, all of my classmates would make fun of me because I couldn't understand their jokes in Tagalog. So I just pretend to laugh. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't feel left out, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I get it. I get it. I also get that if I were to have a classmate, I, I went to school here in Cebu. So if I were to have a classmate that spoke Straight Bisaya. I mean, straight English. Pusibling. Ija judge mo. Hindi naman ija judge, but he did, don't get along so well with all the others who are having a hard time also speaking English. Mm. I tried my best to learn, but it's hard. It's really hard, especially if you're from Sibunga, because you're used to, I don't know, like it's just different. But I think if I were to be placed in Manila, my number one language would be English. That's because I don't know how to speak Tagalog. Yeah, there are so many things that native Tagalog speakers, um, parang iba yung humor nila, iba yung yeah, I felt the way that they use also. words, right? Yeah. When I was in college, parang suddenly from a Bisa very Bisaya culture, I went to Manila and everyone's speaking Tagalog and have ta they have Tagalog humor, they have yeah. all of these 
references that I don't understand. I don't watch TV pa. Yeah. So lahat talaga, like, I'm an alien here. <laughs> Ganun yung feeling. That's how I felt when I first went into showbiz and right. tried, tried to memorize lines. Oh. And di ba, ang teleserye Tagalog is so much more malalim. So yeah. it would take me like two hours to memorize like a two-minute monologue. Right. Sobrang hirap. And totally get it. Even mga talk shows and there's mga inside jokes na hindi ka updated or yung mga terms na kagaya ng um, you already. Uh, ikaw na. Yeah. If you're not... Pop culture. Yeah. If you're not immersed into Tagalog language. Yeah. Even like... Or like if you're in Cebu, parang hindi mo masyadong It's magigets. different. Yeah. It's different. The, the the phrases like that in Cebu and in Manila are different. Uh, so Cebu, it's choroy. Pag Chor- Chor- <laughs> <laughs> so we get the Cebu yeah. Bisaya humor. <laughs> Even gay lingo in Cebu and Manila different. are totally different. Uh-oh. Yeah. But anyway, um, we were speaking about what I wanted to be and how I changed from being a teacher, like yeah. wanting to be a teacher mm-hmm. to whatever it is, right? So yeah. when I was in college, I thought when I was in Cebu that I was a great dancer because Cebu is fairly small and there are little, like, we lang tayong dancers dito sa Cebu. Mm. But I went to, when I went to Manila and I met so many other people, I'm like, oh my God, I can't be a dance teacher. I suck. Like, oh my God, this can't be my career. It's like big fish in a small pond. Yeah, exactly. Big fish in a small pond. Yes. Small fish in a big pond. No, when you were here in Cebu, you were a big fish in a small pond. Akala mo, you were the it na. I thought like, kaya na. I didn't, I knew I wasn't like the shit, but I knew I was pretty like decent. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, ah, kaya. But when I went to Manila, I'm like, oh, no, 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 girl. You gotta rethink your life because you're not so good after all. <laughs> <laughs> Napansin ko kasi na dito sa Cebu, we tend to keep our, to ourselves more than the people in Manila or at least the people we know in Manila. So you were talking about dancing and the way you dance versus the Manila people dancing. Yeah, because I remember in high school, if you dance like... So, like feel na feel mo yung, yung swag dance. Na swag. Yeah, swag na swag ka. Smile People na smile. make fun of you. Like, mm. oh, gi career mo na niya, oy. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> yeah, like, career, career. Yeah, like Ooh, feel na she's, feel. She's um trying too hard. Like she feel like she's giving her all. That's so gross. Parang something like that. Feel uh-huh. na feel. But in Manila, when I started dancing for the school, like we, I was part of the company of Ateneo dancers, and I was immersed in like so many different. Dancers that were so good, and when they danced, like my jaw would drop, like ganon sila kagaling. Mm. And I was like, I don't want to dance. I'm shy, like ganon. And so um, I realized, like it's it's really part of culture, By nga. culture mindset. Yeah, yeah, like I was so shy that I was dancing. I was scared to kind of give my all because I was scared that people would judge me. Uh. But there, you're dancing. Like no one's gonna no one's gonna care. No one's gonna judge you. That's what you're here to I do. I get you're that. It's like um, when I, we were in school and someone participated all the time. Yes. Parang gina judge siya. So I realized that dance wasn't for me. I still wanted to be a teacher, but then parang mm, I need to find a different career path. And then I still loved fashion super, like mm-hmm. because I went to a school without any uniforms. Um, I would spend any remaining allowance money to buy clothes. Mm. Yeah, and I didn't have like my allowance was sakto lang for eating. So what I do is I grocery a lot because my grocery was charged to mommy and daddy. <laughs> so grocery a lot. Bound to school, <laughs> bound to school, and all my allowance money I used it to buy clothes. Uh. And then I didn't have budget, and I wanted like every day different clothes to go to school because we don't have uniform. So ukay ukay, <laughs> yeah, grab it talaga. That was so fun. But I realized I really love fashion, and because I was in business. What else can I do in fashion, right? Like mm. you can't there there weren't really many options back then, or at least I wasn't aware. So I wanted to either work in a magazine or work in business in fashion, like for a fashion brand. Mm. And I actually applied. I applied. I was gonna work for Mark by Mark Jacobs wow. <laughs> in SSI. Like I, I, I did an interview, but then parang when I entered the building and like it was so corporate, like in my head, this isn't what I imagined. Mm. You know, like you have this dream that you have this idea of your dream job. Like, for example, you think, oh, this is going to be so awesome. It's going to be like, what's that show with a magazine? Devil Wears Prada? Uh, Something like that. And then when you're there, you're like, it's just an office. And then (laughs) what are they going to make me do? Excel lang pala. Akala ko fashion. Mm. You know what I mean? 
So, hindi yun natuloy. And obviously, it required me to stay in Manila, which I wasn't so sure of yet at the time. Wala ka pang blog nito? Um, I had a blog when I was in the third year of college because it was a school project. Mm. But it wasn't anything big. It was just a passion project, a thing on the side that I had. But I was blo- blogging, blogging every single day then. I document my wow. outfits. And funny that you mentioned So before the, blog, the whole lookbook thing, you'll, you've already posted money. Yeah, the blog came first. And then at that time, my fashionista sister, Diane, she started this fashion label here in Cebu, like a retail brand mm. that she was big in Visayas and Mindanao. But it was really big in Cebu at the time. What a girl wants. What a girl wants. And... um. I actually would ask clothes from her every Christmas. Like, please send me clothes as your Christmas gift. I need more clothes to wear to school. La, 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 la. And so uh, in order to help her back, mm. I opened a lookbook account. So lookbook.nu is kind of like, it's a website. It's mm-hmm. kind of like Instagram now, but it's a website. And people just upload a single photo of their OOTDs. Every OOTD day. Lang OOTD talaga lang siya. talaga. And they have rules like, kailangan head to knee shot, your outfit is seen, la 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 la. But it was very popular at the time. Mm. And so I uploaded photos of my What a Girl Wants outfits on Lookbook, shot using my laptop webcam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it worked. Like, people recognized me in school. They'd leave comments on my blog like, hey, what are you going to wear tomorrow? Can you post about it? And that's how it slowly gained traction. And like with Lookbook, I'd get international sponsors. I know it's so weird, but like at the time, they like if a company told me, I'll give you free shoes, I'm like, whoa, that's so cool. I'll post like one million times for you. Ganon. Guys, for you for those who don't know what, what a girl wants is it's their fashion label here in Visayas and Mindanao. It was pretty big. It was big, yeah. And you were actually considering to get me. Yeah, as an love, endorser for their when. men's line before and you won PBB. Before we knew each other. Before you won, yeah. After I won PBB. Before, after. Yes, this was after you were talking with and in in Manila already. You remember you visited the management office. Oh yeah. With your sister, we didn't know each other, pa. Yeah, guys. Pero hindi nila ako kinuha, guys. Mahal daw ako. Mahal siya at the time. Pero, <laughs> <laughs> pero ngayon gagawin niya for free. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, so that was part of my career path. I worked for my sister for a while because, you know, I realized that mm, working in Manila isn't for me. Working in corporate isn't for me. I still wanted to do something in fashion. Mm. And I thought to myself, why not work na lang for my sister? It's fashion. It's business. I love her. I love her style. But, but it's all you worked things. for a magazine brand. Yeah, well, in between, was it in between? I don't really remember the timeline anymore. Mm. But there was a time in my life where parang I just felt everything was so stagnant. Ah, naalala ko na. Before okay. I worked for my sister, yes, you're correct. I yes. worked for a fashion magazine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which lasted a few months? <laughs> Two months lang. Two <laughs> months lang. But it's exactly the same as I... Um, described earlier where you have this dream of a job you think it's so glamorous you think for example you think blogging is so glamorous Mm, right and it's not but then when you're there and you're setting up the camera and you're sweating and you're doing your own makeup and then you realize like it's not so glam after all it's hard work but I don't think there's a job naman talaga that's glamorous 24-7 it's just when we're younger when we're fresh graduates we don't know what it actually entails expectation versus reality. Yeah, but there's a lot alam. more paperwork than we want. Right, and the fashion, um, the fashion magazine job I realized might be for some people, but it really wasn't for me. Mm. And to be honest, um, working for that magazine actually was cost what caused me to kind of fall out of love with fashion. Mm. Yeah. Because I, I don't think you're a fashion girl. I na, love fashion. I mean, in, but I'm not a fashion girl. Yeah. And there's a difference, I realize. What's the difference? Well, uh, I might be generalizing, so I hope people won't get offended by this, but it's just my experience. Like, for example, when I got invited to go to New York Fashion Week, I was surrounded by fashion girls, mm. and it was an opportunity of a lifetime. Kill, girls would kill for that opportunity, and I was so excited to go. But I realized when I was there, I didn't enjoy it. Like, 
there's kind of an exclusivity factor. Like mm. you have to, first of all, like you want to get photographed. If you want to get photographed, you have to buy all of these expensive it things, which I didn't really believe in. You like, trend, 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 trend like, things like the... You have to buy Prada heels. It's just this season that fire people will notice. Yeah, or the crazy la. ugly shoes. Whatever. Like, yeah, it's if, if you want to do that, go ahead. Yeah. But I just realized that's not, not my personality. You. Like I don't want to spend so much just to get photographed. And second, I don't want I don't want people to keep staring at me and photographing me. I just want to like what I'm wearing. Mm. And then when you're in the show, there's kind of like politics with who gets to sit in the front row, who gets to sit in the second wow, row. Wow, like like they show in the movies, parang ganyan. Yeah, and parang I, I just enjoy fashion as an enthusiast. I don't enjoy the politics of it. I don't enjoy um, everything else. Like you have to know all the designers, all the designs, all of the the names of the collections and. PR with this person and you know and it's not me but depende no because we have a lot of friends who enjoy it a yeah lot. I have a lot of really good friends yeah. really close friends and they really enjoy it so good for them yeah. ko na sa kanila, I love I mean I love fashion but they love fashion one million times more than me it seems and I also realized it's okay to accept that yeah yeah it's it's you it's them it's because before like I in my head, like, okay, if I like fashion, then I must like this. Mm. Then I must want to be photographed. Then I must want to go to Fashion Week. And then when you get older, you realize, I can still love fashion even if I don't like Fashion Week. You know what yeah. I mean? You love fashion, but I think your style, this is coming from an engineer who knows <laughs> nothing about fashion. But your style tend to be more classic, more timeless, must, I would say conservative in a way that you don't invest in things that are trendy too much sometimes yeah I just like to wear clothes that make me feel good make me feel confident mm. and just make me happy that's it that's really it yeah ako naman talaga I just like to wear black t-shirts <laughs> <laughs> hindi fashion yung sayo practicality na yun okay so how did the blog get started the blog this got was before started. the the job in yeah, the magazine yeah it was the blog has been a constant in my life since 2009. So from the very beginning, it was thirsty thought already. Yes. A funny story, actually, because we had to come up with a name for our school project. And I couldn't think of one. I, I really am super bad at coming up with names. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I just went to this website called band, bandnamegenerator.com. Okay. And then band as in banda, like hindi banda. band na bawal. No, no, banda. <laughs> okay. And I just typed, you just type a single word and then it will kind of generate random things to go with that word. Mm -hmm. So, I typed thought because I loved writing when I was in college, like mm -hmm. it was one of my passions writing. And so I typed thought because I wanted my thoughts to come across in the mm -hmm. website and then Who from <laughs> From a list of names, I picked Thirsty Thought because I, I love alliteration. So TT, Thirsty Thought, like it sounded great to me. Mm. Then all of my friends made fun of me because it sounds dirty, like thirsty. It kind of does. <laughs> and like even now, they always make fun of me. You're so thirsty. So now it's <laughs> it's changed into chrisoy.com. I changed it because people kept making fun of me. More of my close friends mm. kept making fun of me. And I also feel like I outgrew it because... I don't write as much anymore. I spend my time vlogging more. So parang the thought aspect na wala yeah. na rin. I, I don't think it's just outgrowing it. Parang nag-iba na talaga ang mundo. <laughs> Dati, for me personally, okay tayo with words and pictures and photos online and we'll read websites all the time. But ngayon, it's all about YouTube na mas, yeah. you can get your point across then, you can show personality. I feel, yeah, you just evolve with the time. And honestly, nothing's calculated. I just kind of like went to the flow and whatever I was feeling at the moment. And I feel like I still am thirsty thought. I still am that girl. You know, like for example, Trisha Gosingtian, mm. she's Slumberdoll. She's one of the OGs. Eh. We were uh -oh. parang more or less sabay. Nauna siya. She was Slumberdoll. And I feel like she will always be Slumberdoll. And the people who read her, like who read her words, who followed her on DeviantArt at the time, they will always like see Trisha as Slumberdoll. And it's like a special moment in time when the internet was a safe place. <laughs> safe place? It, the internet was different back then. Mas ano siya, no? Mas yung follower, uh, the people that follow your story, parang you kind of get a deeper connection, I feel. And it's a smaller group, but it's, uh, I don't know. Is that true? What or? do you mean? Like, kasi konte lang ang nag-read sa'yo. And like, parang, 
they follow your stories and you're kind of like an indie pa or yeah as, something like that parang ganyan parang if they take the time to really type your website on their URL mm. and then go through your or feed bookmark and read, you bookmark you it means parang there's a connection there eh? like mm. they're really interested right so when did you decide to make it a full time thing so Thirsty Thoughts started 2009. I was in college and it was like an online diary of sorts. It became a fashion diary when people around school recognized me. I started a lookbook we talked about earlier. Mm. And then I got sponsors, free shoes. That was Did you get became... paid right away or wala? No, it was um, free shoes. Yun talaga yung una, free shoes. So you did it for the shoes. I did it for the shoes. <laughs> and then I worked in a magazine. I still had a blog and... Then I realized the blog gave me so much access because I was getting great following. Like, mm. um, even though I was the lowest ranking member of that magazine, mm. I would get front row seats to Philippine Fashion Week because of my blog. Mm. Na parang not connected at all to the magazine. So even though I was like bottom of the food chain sa magazine, seatmate ko parang yung mga top editors. Mm. Ganon. So, ah, okay, this blog is really my potential. Okay. Yeah. And then there was a time when. I think the magazine asked me to stop, the, not stop the blog, but like not endorse anything because mm. it would kind of connect the magazine the magazine to whatever I endorse because I'm working for the magazine, something like ah. that. So it was like either I wanted the magazine or I wanted my blog. And in mm. the end, obviously, I chose my blog. Mm. Yeah. Have you Did you ever see it as something you would do long term or was it just a sideline hobby? At that time, sideline lang. Sideline mm. lang talaga. Um, because I wasn't earning. And if I was, what? Like, peanuts lang. Peanuts lang. Enough to buy new shoes lang. Ganon. Mm. So when I stopped the magazine, I went back to Cebu. I worked for my sister. I did the blog still part-time. And mm. now, because I was working for a fashion brand, and my sister's fashion brand at that, I had an unlimited access to clothes. Mm. So my fashion blog grew because I could get any any clothes that I wanted from the event, like from the warehouse. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. Have you ever wor worn something and then sold it afterwards? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. I still do that now, second hand. It's like a model, na, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean sustainability, right? Why would you throw away something that's still good? No, I mean you wore it and then you sold it to store. Wore it and then, oh gosh, you know the store was so popular back then. Yeah, I remember hearing about people lining up. People lined up outside our store. There was a time where we were selling Havana slippers. My bouncers, pa kami. People would line up. Before the store opened. Uso pa yung Havayanas. I mean, yung bagong bago pa sila. Yeah. And I remember um, people would buy clothes off our backs. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'm wearing this Water Girl One Stop today and people are lining up. It's sold out in the store. They will buy I'm wearing it like, I'm wearing it in the store and they will buy it off me mm. for full price. So, yeah. That has happened. <laughs> And I remember like loving my work for my sister. It was so everything that I wanted with the familiarity of home. Because mm. when I was in Manila, I was living alone and it was hard like having to do everything by myself. But when I was in Cebu, like it was literally like everything that I wanted. Mm. It was fun. It was everything. But it came to a point where the blog was like taking over my life. <laughs> I would always rush to finish work early because I had to shoot. I had to shoot fast. The sun's gonna go down. So na. effort na effort ka pa this, at this time. This effort na effort. Time. Pa I, it was just like an OOTD every day, basically. Mm. But I got so many opportunities to fly to Manila. I'd only be in Cebu like three days in a week. And I felt it was so unfair to my sister because she was paying me for to be full-time. Mm. And then I didn't give her the time that she deserved. Right? So you quit. So we had talk and like, my sister also was, I think she had three kids at the time. And we mm. had to travel so much also for what the girl wants. To source, to meet suppliers, etc., etc. So we'd be gone for weeks and she felt bad that she was doing it to her kids. Mm. And um, my other sister, Jack, parang she also decided that she wanted to pursue something different. Mm. So we were actually, people were going to buy us out. Mm. They wanted to buy the brand. Big brands actually wanted to buy our brand. But... They wanted na kasama kami. Yeah, which is hard. Which is hindi pwede kasi yeah. we But wanted, you are what the brand um what made the brand kasi. We are what made the brand. It's our taste. It's actually yeah. it was my taste because I was the merchandising mm. girl. So, yun. So we decided like okay, might as well close the store while it's not it's not losing money. It's still on a high, right? 
Kesa, we don't focus our time on it anymore and then it'll die and then sayang lang. Per sayang, no? That had like, I don't know, how many? Five, six branches already or more? Ten. We had ten, ten wow. branches. In Cagayan, Mero. Cagayan, Dava. We had two in Manila. We mm. had, we have in Cebu. A lot. So after this, what did you like think of doing? Like blog na? Kasi it was earning na or wala pa? Hmm, what was I do? Blog, blog na. Blog mm. na. Yeah. I think because the blog was up and running and it was really doing well already at that point. So when we collectively decided to stop what the girl wants, and it was a very sad moment. We took Did a Hong cry? Kong trip pod, just the three of us to bond. We, parang, it was sad but bittersweet. Parang a relief also that I can finally do my own thing and not be tied down to a nine to five job. Mm. Yeah. And then, you know, slowly but surely, the the blog picked up mm. and took so much of my time. Mm. And eventually, that's that became my source of income. Na rin. And yeah, here we are today. Wow. Pero when did it come to a point where, parang was there even any argument from your dad? Na parang oh, this is not sustainable. Whatever. Uh, no. Only, my parents only ever told me that they didn't want me to blog when I was in college pa. Mm. Um, living under their roof, like, uh, their money, like, my allowance, they were the ones giving it to me pa. And it was more of a privacy issue because, you know, pag Chinese, you mm. want to keep everything quiet. You don't want to put yourself out there. Mm. And, well, I hindi ako nakinig. <laughs> I told my dad, like, I assured him na, I'm not posting naman anything scandalous. Like, I'm not gonna share naman family history here. Mm. So, mahinayaan niya ako. Just then, Chris's history right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an open book, guys. I have nothing to hide. But eventually, when magazines started featuring me, um, I'd be on the cover of magazines. I'd be featured in newspapers. And my dad loves reading newspapers every morning. And his friends would tell him, Oh, your daughter, oh, he, he's, she's in the newspaper. <laughs> Yun, na proud na siya sa akin. <laughs> and he never, he was, he's been the most supportive dad ever since. Mm, that's Asking, like my mom sa PBB. Because yeah. ayon niya mag PBB ako. But after I won, parang masaya siya because people called her and then said, Oh, your son is very mabait. Whatever. Yeah. I think it's not. Anything bad sa parents natin. It's just kind of, uh, parang scared of the outside world kind of thing. Like, or, I want to protect my baby. It's something very, if I were your father, I'd also double think it. Like, it would be something very new and strange. But right. is this internet thing and posting about Are you posting fashion? pictures of yourself? Daming yeah. mga weirdos online. Yun talaga, that's what my dad always tells me. Did he get mad when you posted like mga bikini photos? Oh yeah, it's his rule. In fact, if you guys are listening and you have my book, <laughs> that I released probably four years ago. Um, it's there. His, da- his Ten Commandments, never post bikini photos. And he always called me out. And then you just posted it. Paren. Um, I tried to stop, but like, wala, what, what am I gonna wear in the beach? <laughs> diba? Like, alang naman, I'll go to the beach and I won't show any photo at all, zero. If we had a baby weird. girl and she posted like bikini photos, it's fine because I never posted like porny photos, mm. like FHM levels. No, naman. And my body isn't like that also. My body's like teenage body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, ano like, I mean, like, b- Wala, but I never really, walang malis talaga lahat. When did you realize that you can do this full, full time for a long period of time? When I was working for What the Girl Wants, I knew na that I was actually making more na sa blogging mm. than, than my work, my full time job. So, hindi, it wasn't masakit na for me to let go. And it was an easy transition to Instagram because it's like, parang, it's the same thing almost. Yeah, diba? I had Instagram already and. Parang at the time, I was still working for my sister. Um, I'd have press trips already. I'd mm. get flown to Sydney, to Hong Kong. Like, parang I really was not spending time in Cebu anymore. Like, the jet set life na. So, it was about time to stop working 9 to 5 mm. and concentrate on blogging. Si Chris, guys, when we first got together, parang kinikriticize niya palagi yung Instagram ko kasi wala dong feed goals. No, guys, you remember Instagram of the past when it had to Random be like, the color scheme had to be it was all blue, all brown, all red. Yung sayo, all blue. I remember yours was all blue and super colorful. Yung Mine sa akin was, colorful, was like yeah. whatever I felt like sh- 
taking a photo. I can yeah, take a and photo I remember of, like, we had this. We have this McDonald's campaign. McDonald's got you. McDonald's got me. Right? And we didn't know each other. We didn't know each other. At wala. We only talked about it like years after mm. when we were looking at our feeds. And yung my sock, photo, yeah, the sock, sock the striped, striped sock. Na Ronald McDonald na sock. Yeah, and mine was like naka OOTD socks. My sister shot me, and my sister's a professional photographer, so the photo was nice. And then Slater was part of the same campaign, and literally he took his phone and took a photo of his feet, like from where I stand. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Eto yung post mo, grabe yung effort ko sa post ko. Eto yung post mo." <laughs> it is the English. <laughs> Yeah, and because we got together, I think that was what year was that when you got together? Two thousand fifteen ish. I forget. More, more or less, I mm. think that was the time when Slater's feed became super cute. Oh, my, my filter na, um effort na siya, he learned how to shoot photos. It's if, because of me, guys. That's why he's here. If there's anyone wanting to follow in, in your footsteps, do you think that today? Might still be a good time, or is it too late? The way I don't it has think passed? I don't think it's too late. It's definitely harder. It's definitely harder compared to when I started. But because lang kayo. Yeah, because there was so much space pa, and now there's so much noise. Like everyone's on the platform, mm, so to get it's discovered, hard to get it's harder. Yeah. What do you think would be the it factor right now? Or, you just kind of have to find a niche for yourself. Yeah, um, I think that's it. Yeah. You just have to find a niche. Like, there's always going to be somebody who can relate to you and you alone. Yeah. So, for example, if I want to be fashion, I just own the fact that I'm a fashion girl, but I don't like fashion week, something like that. Or like, for example, ikaw, mm. um, Slater, I told him like, I'll take your photo, I'll take your photo so many times in the past, but he was always not comfortable. His Ayaw account was, post, post. he didn't want to post, he didn't, he's not a fashion guy, he didn't know like what to sh- post on his Instagram feed. Until now, he just accepted that, hey, I like plain clothes. I'm an engineer. I'll like post things, things that I like. I'll fix things. <laughs> and then now, you found your niche. Yeah. And that's a very good advice. And I, it's a good direction that we're headed as a collective human race na parang uh, hindi na tayo kailangan na uh, magfa-follow or like pretend to be someone Anyone or else. not. Yeah, I feel like the world is also more accepting now because of social media. Yeah, and I told told you this like people can actually do good by just focusing on their hobbies, no matter how small of a niche it is. Like right. I see YouTube videos of or YouTube channels of people reviewing microphones who have two hundred thousand followers or subscribers. But what? Microphones lang. All you right. do is talk about microphones. So parang ganyan na yung world because it's so easy to access everything. So you can be eccentric in your own way. Be yourself. You can really be yourself. Yeah. And you don't know that with what you're doing, you love what you're doing, you're just minding your own business, you can change talaga people's lives. You know how many emails I've gotten mm. With people telling me that I changed their lives, it's crazy, and that's why. Like there was a time before, na na mm. burnout na ako, I'm tired, but then I'd always get an email like, "I'm a mom, Chris, and you know what? You really inspired me to take care of myself again because mm. I let myself go. I gave all my time to my kid, um, and I always was always thought that being kikai isn't good. And then when I look at you and you're so kikai and you don't care, parang I realized, hey, it's okay, pala to take time for myself, and I feel better. I'm not depressed anymore. I'm mm. like that. I'm like that. So parang just being yourself, you don't know talaga that people watching can you can change your lives for the better. Mm. And I feel like burnout is because of you not really finding your niche as well or you're trying to be you're trying to do something that is against who you are. Well, no, that's how I, I think felt. it's yes, but also when I felt burnout way back when, oh OTDs pa lang to, parang it was me doing the same thing every day. Over and like, over again. I was working a 9 to 5 job. After 5 o'clock, I'd rush to take my photo. I'd be so stressed because wala nang sun, wala akong magandang background. Like, and then I'll post it and then I'll be so tired, I'll call it a day. And then, parang nawala yung connection between me and my blog readers. Mm-hmm. Or I forgot why I'm actually doing it in the first place, why I actually love doing it in the first place. Parang, when you sell out, that's how you feel also, right? You just, yeah. when it's every day is like, I have to meet this deadline, I have to meet this deadline. And then you forget why you actually are doing that. Mm. The passion aspect is gone. That's when 
burnout happens for me. Yeah, meron akong uh, YouTube channel na pinafollow si Mr. Beast. I keep telling you about this because I think he has like 40 million subscribers. The guy who gives millions? Yeah. He started with like a thousand uh, videos na yung followers niya, 1,000 lang din. Mm -hmm. Tapos parang tinanong siya, why do you keep, still keep on doing the thing you're doing and you're not making any progress? Sabi niya, because I have fun. As long as I have fun, I'll keep doing it. Exactly. So if you do it for having fun or it's your passion or it's something you actually enjoy, it will never seem like work. And the money, the money side would be an, a bonus. Na yeah, lang. exactly. People have asked me that question a lot of times in the past. Like, why are you blogging? Is it because you get freebies? Is it because mm. you want to get famous? I'm like... Hello, I started 2009 when my only reader was mom. Like, <laughs> I had so many posts twice a day pa ako mag post. It's not because of that. I love doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And I'm really lucky that I'm still here up to this day. And yes. that's actually an advice that I would give Scott, the future Scott. Na, even if it doesn't make you filthy rich or famous, as long as you love what you're doing, at least man lang feed yourself. <laughs> as long as you love what you're doing, that's what life is all about. We only have one life. Why not spend it on something, something you, you love? love right? Why we shouldn't be we shouldn't be living to work. Yes. Right? Or live living for the weekend. Yeah. Yung parang Ah, uh, I can't wait for Saturday and Sunday. At least I can do what I love. Yeah. Parang ganyan. It's I I read this in I watched this in ano eh, Emily in Paris sa Netflix. Yeah. Diba? You you <laughs> Americans, you live to work. Well, in France now, they work to live, something uh, like that. But for me, I don't agree. I think kaya maghanap ng balance between work and your life na you don't, it's not one or the other. Yes. Right? Or sometimes you, you, you do. Hindi naman ibig sabihin you hate your work para lang, you work, 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 para weekends you mm. can celebrate. Hindi naman ganun. But sometimes, let's face it, some some of, uh, we're lucky enough to do what we love. Meron naman din talagang mga tao na kailangan mag-sacrifice. Yes. And maybe it could be something na mag-work ka and then you can do what you love on the side and hopefully it will grow and be self-sustaining. Yes. Din, diba? Yeah. Kasi we're, like some people have to work and feed their own families. Right. So they and some people, like talaga. what they love doing, hindi talaga monetizable. Yeah. So, wala. You just have to. <laughs> to keep at it na parang hobby na lang talaga siya. Na something, yeah. We're just yeah. really lucky. Yeah. I guess back to it, it's something to do with luck din pala. Yeah. Okay, fine. You're right. It's a balance. <laughs> it's a balance. Luck and skill. It's a balance. Yeah. Guys, but, if you don't know what we're talking about, previous episode. See, si, a uh, friend natin, si Chase, was texted me. Luck is when opportunity meets skill. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's so Chase. Pwede. That's pwede, so Chase. Pwede, pwede, pwede. Hey, Chase, you listen to our podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, he read this topic in my stories. Mm. Okay, wow. Thanks for share sharing your Why story, Why is love. this an interview with Grizz tonight? Somehow it just happened. Ah, uh, next session na. Interview with later na. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Bye, guys. Good night. Good night.